Welcome everybody to the first episode of the Panda Podcast where we talk a little bit about esports and a lot about Panda. I am here joined by none other than Cody, Panda's owner and founder, Ben, uh, the co-owner and COO, and Contest, this my co-host for this week. How are you guys doing today, guys? Doing well. Great. Doing That's well, what I man. like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Uh, we're super excited and I'm ecstatic to be hosting uh, this podcast. This weekly podcast is what we're hoping to push out. Uh, we're going to talk about tons of things, but this week we're going to focus strictly on Panda Gaming. So let's just start at the one thing that everybody wants to know. What is Panda Gaming and where did it originate? Cody, can you take it away for us with what your vision and where Panda Gaming came from for you? Well, um... Panda Gaming really started um, with me as a gamer. I used to be a competitive gamer. Gaming has always been an outlet in my life. So I got into gaming really big, uh, got into the competitive scene. After a few years of playing, I kind of decided that, you know, going through the hassle of finding teammates and kind of making that grind and going through that that ladder, or you know, just those stages you have to go through, to, you know, to get to the top. Um, it's just something that I just didn't really want to pursue or something that I just feel like it was just going to take too much time and too much from me. So I started to get into helping manage other eSport organizations and <clears throat> shortly after, you know, working with some big eSport organizations, I just kind of realized that I was kind of better off just doing my own thing. I kind of had a little bit more ambition and um, a little bit more knowledge and marketing and stuff like that. So. I just kind of, you know, sat down and just kind of, you know, focused my time on creating something for myself. I was going to school for marketing and um, came up with the name Panda, um, you know, kind of found the marketing value in it without, you know, uh, spelling it out without the A. So, you know, just <laughs> small little things that, you know, kind of like came together to kind of make Panda <clears throat> something unique. And then, you know, obviously we started getting great placements and then, been and I think after our second top 16 placement we got one at um, UMG South Carolina and then one at DreamHack Austin with a Hearthstone player so um, it was pretty cool we picked up Ben and I think like right after Ben got aboard we ended up getting our second top 16 placement which I think was in Anaheim Don't yes so you yeah. talk about yeah, Ben coming on Anaheim. So you talk about Ben coming on. Ben, can you kind of give us your side? You know, where did you and Cody meet and kind of where that kind of chemistry came that made Panda, you know, what you guys has dreamed of or are still dreaming of at least? Yeah, so it was, uh, it was actually interesting. We we're both from the same hometown. We even went to the same high school. Uh, oh, he was, nice. Yeah, he was uh, two years younger than me, though, in, or two year grades below me. And uh, so, I mean, look, we knew of each other, I think, back in high school, but we weren't like – we weren't necessarily hanging out. We weren't super close buddies or anything. But, um, you know, throughout my life, I've been a PC gamer. So I kind of come from the other side of esports and the other side of video games as opposed to, you know, console and COD and Halo and that type of thing. Um, but I was working for a startup video game venue uh, here in Louisville um, right out of college. Uh, and I'd gotten a degree in social media and marketing. Uh, through social media. So I was working as general manager <clears throat> for them and actually hired code as the lead coordinator because we were attempting to do some esports stuff there. And fortunately, it was startup, didn't necessarily pan out. And um, I had, through that time, you know, been playing on Counter Strike teams. And I was with a team, and Cody was like, hey, you know, come play for us. So you know, we were kind of working together. I was playing for Panda on basically the very first Panda CSGO team, mm -hmm. um, which is essentially what our current roster has evolved into. Um, but basically that business kind of, you know, took a, a sour turn. And, you know, I approached Cody and said, you know, I want to I want to try and get an esports. I want to take a shot at this. You know, how do I get involved with you? And, um, you know, we came to an agreement and, you know, just kind of, figured everything out, how we were going to, you know, split things up and, you know, found something that I was happy with. And, 
we just kind of hit the ground running. We uh, started out with COD and really focused on that within the first few months um, that I was there. But we had, you know, like Cody said, a Hearthstone player and some other stuff that was going on. But, um, you know, we really just kind of hit the ground running at the start of last summer. And it kind of led us to, you know, what happened in the winter and, and our, you know, Vegas event and then into Atlanta. And here we are now. So. Um, it honestly has moved incredibly fast. I think it's been a year and like two weeks since I've been involved, but uh, it's been great and super happy that Cody decided to bring me on. So, <laughs> yeah, so something yeah. that I kind of I kind of got this vibe from is you know Cody being the console side. You're talking about COD, all that kind of stuff, and then you coming from the PC side. How does that dynamic play in with the two of you guys with Panda? Is there kind of tension there because maybe you guys don't understand uh, all the things about each other because from experience, PC esports and console esports are two very, very different beasts. So, can you maybe work talk to us about like, is did it come easily, and it was just like, you know what, you do your thing on PC, and I'll do my thing on console, or was there kind of like a we want to feel each other out and learn this for for both of us? Uh, I mean, I I think Cody would probably agree. I think it um, at the start we probably you know we we. We probably, you know, I would focus a little bit more on PC. He'd focus a little bit more on console. But, I mean, at, at this point, and I think we quickly fell into the role of we we tag team pretty much everything that we do in terms of teams. If, mm -hmm. you know, we're if we're talking to a Counter-Strike team or if we're talking to a COD team or a Halo team, you know, whatever eSport it's in, you know, it's a pretty open conversation between him and I. Um Cody is incredibly knowledgeable. And so, you know, when it came to figuring out stuff about PC sports, he didn't have any issues. And mm -hmm. when it came to consoles, he, he was, you know, light years ahead of me. Um, <laughs> just, and, you know, I, but I think that's also due to the inherent um, nature of console esports versus PC sports. I think they're, I think they're different because I, I feel like with open bracket tournaments on almost every console esport, it's more of a community. Whereas every game in PC esports seems to be more segregated, as in it's the Counter Strike community, it's the Dota community, and it's the League community. Mm -hmm. They're not all like, you know, they don't all, I mean, they might all know of each other, but it just doesn't seem like there's like, you know, maybe it's Twitter. I, I don't know what it is, but there doesn't <laughs> seem to be that same type of connectivity. Yeah. So. I can understand that. I can understand that. Maybe we might harp back on that later when we talk about some other things. But, Austin, I want to jump over to you because. You're not the higher up management that Ben and Cody are, um, but you are still an integral part of Panda Gaming. So tell me a little bit about your story in coming into Panda, Panda Gaming, meeting Ben and Cody, and uh, kind of getting involved in that way. Um, well, I got started with esports kind of like Cody did, you know, just playing and stuff like that. And then when I got tired of playing, um, I went into management of UMG. And with management at UMG, I learned a lot of things. I met a lot of people, and uh, Cody was were, was one of those people. And when uh, UMG just didn't pan out the way I planned, uh, I took a took a break over the summer, and that's kind of when Panda Gaming really first got its <laughs> first got its start. <laughs> Um, and I find that uh, very funny too. Just so that everybody knows, I find that hilarious. Also, <laughs> UMG did not pan out the way I planned because <laughs> I, I ran into a bunch of monitors. She stopped Caroline. No way. No, we got to make sure to link the video in the description. Oh my gosh, the video. <laughs> yeah, you guys. There will be a link down in the description below. I. I have not heard that story. Wait a second. No, now we have to stop, and I want to hear this story. What happened here? Yep, yep, let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right, so in UNG, South Carolina, I was the assistant floor manager, and um, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and Panda was actually playing on a side station at 2 o'clock in the morning because oh, no. <laughs> it, went, it went that late because of all the, you know, we didn't have Cronus Max or anything like that yeah, during the yeah. time, and we didn't know about the Bluetooth stuff. So it was going on 2 o'clock in the morning. I was bored. There was a guy with a hoverboard in there, and I was like, hey, you know something? 
what's funny about like hoverboards, you know, people always stand on them. Well, I want to lay down on one, so I started laying down no. on one, and I went, I went to, I went between like the stations, and um, when I hit a roadblock of wires, I decided, well, I can't go any farther, so I got to back up. So I started to back up, and then I shifted my weight, and <laughs> when I when you shift your weight on a hoverboard, as you all know, it tends to turn. It tends <laughs> like into a whole bunch of monitors. Oh and no, I, man! I, I yeah. Out, so yeah, yeah. I, I I think that, that is the definition, definition of not working out for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was honestly expecting the story to go like more like in the direction of the hoverboard exploded in like the middle of like the event and like broke waters, but that's that's crazy. That's super no, awesome. So, let's get that okay. straight down. I didn't break a single thing. Well, that's that's also good. So that happens, UMG doesn't pan out. You meet up with Cody and Ben, then what? Um, well, I, I knew of Panda and I took a break during the summer because that happened in February and I took a break during the summer and the spring and a little towards, um, Cod XP at, in Anaheim, I actually met, uh, Shoddy, which was our Call of Duty coach in Anaheim and, um, talked to him a little bit. He knew me from pre previous events and stuff like that. And, uh, I kind of wanted to get back into esports again and... Uh, Shadi set me up with Cody, and uh, Cody brought me on actually as a social media manager. So I was strictly just tweeting out on the Panda Twitter and stuff like that. And um, then uh, one of our our general manager actually left, and uh, Cody bumped me up to general manager because I was already doing some of the duties that general managers do. Um, so he bumped me up to general manager, and that's where I've been since around November. Um, so I joined in September, around November. Uh, Cody bumped me up to general manager, and I have been helping with whatever they need, whether it's the stream team, but now we have a stream manager, um, whether it's, you know, just getting uh, graphic designers, uh, you know, anything that they need. Pretty much, I'm just their, uh, you know, right hand man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I know, I know there's something funny going on here between Cody and Austin, because when I first came into Panda and the first time I ever met Austin, it was with Cody and we were playing. I I I think I was playing. I think it was like right when Battlegrounds came out and Cody and uh, and I were playing and Austin comes in and Cody just starts heckling the crap. Out of Austin, she like and, to bully me. <laughs> and I've, I've I've come to learn that it's not just a Cody thing. <laughs> it's everybody. Everybody likes to give Austin crap. Is there is there something behind that? Is it the monitor thing? Is that does that like just constitute everybody heckling him or? That's why we you know serve him off as a social media man. Much movement in his job. So like three. We had certain men in the test trial. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, which is which, which is really, really funny. funny. I find it funny because Ben and Cody, you guys both said you guys are marketing, and Ben specifically, you said in social media is where you studied, and so like to put Austin in there, like is it's not. I'm not saying that you guys should have been doing. It. I'm saying like to put Austin in there, it's almost like. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the story of like Austin to be like they corrected every single tweet that I ever put out, and like we, yeah, we, we took it on him a lot for tweets. <laughs> It's give or take, but the thing yeah. is, is like I give Austin crap, but I see Austin as someone like I'm someone that would like randomly get on a hoverboard and like crash it into some stuff and like get that would be me. Like the thing is, yeah. is, this time it's not me, <laughs> so it's that much better. Yeah. And yeah. so now exactly. it's just kind of that thing where it's just like, okay, I'm not gonna be that person. It's good. It's like that <laughs> I'll pat I'll pawn all that stuff on Austin. I'll just stay here and be you know owner of Panda, and Austin can do all the things that I'll do. Well, that's super awesome. Good stories all around. So I kind of want to move into something else. Uh, is where might have people seen you talked about a couple of different events dreamhack uh atlanta you know all of these different events that people have seen panned out what about what about maybe other ones and specifically let's talk about csgo ben i know that you talked about being on the csgo team where have been places that the csgo team has been so for probably a year and probably a year and a little under a year and a half 
we've been in CSGO um, in various levels. Uh, we've consistently had an open team that has had different, several different players on it. I played on the team for a couple seasons, ultimately stepped down just due to time commitments with the organization. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm still like a, I'm a sixth man, but just needed to focus on the org. So, um, but we've had other, you know, we've had higher level teams as well. We've had our, our highest level team in CSGO has been a premier level team, which they were originally called Rush, um, Lil Man and that roster, uh, with Toy and some of those guys, Haptic, they, um, they played for us two seasons ago in ESEA premiere and they qualified for the global land, the Mountain Dew global land event. Mm -hmm. And they participated, um, over in Katowice and at that event. And, uh, so, I mean, you, you, you would have seen us during that season, um, you know, on some of the ESEA premiere streams, we were featured in the, uh, Mountain Dew league commercial that runs on Twitch <laughs> on the ESEA channel. So, oh, I mean, Panda yeah. Game has been around, um, CSGO and it's definitely something, you know, that we're, uh, looking to stay in and even potentially get more involved in. So that's kind of the CSGO side of things at the moment. Um, still currently have an open roster and are, you know, just looking for, um, other areas. So. Cool, cool. Yeah, let's move on to uh, Call of Duty. Cody, I know that you, we already talked about it, your background's definitely in the console gaming into the Call of Duty. Talk about maybe we just announced a team, which is super exciting. Neglect, Reviction, two guys that I'm very dear and know come for coming from the SoCal region, but where in the past have we seen the Call of Duty team? Um, I mean... Obviously, everyone saw us at Alliance of them. You know, we had our top eight placement. Yep. We've had several placements before that. Um, placed top 16. Kind of been in, you know, that top 20, top 16. Almost, you know, breaking through to that, um, you know, top 12, top eight um, yeah. area. You know, kind of getting into that pro scene. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, uh, you know, it takes a while to build consistency and find consistency in any esport title. Um, from players um, at that level, just because everyone wants to get to the next level. Um, so I mean, you know, we've been around. Uh, you know, we're just kind of like you know Ben said, we're just kind of look, looking for the right opportunity, the right team. Um, and you know, I think that it could be this team. This team was together for a while before the age mm -hmm. limit uh, happened, and they got back together. Had five days of practice before Dallas plays top twenty. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like you said, we both know Rubiction and Neglect. Um, they're both really great players. They've been around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm kind of a person I like to keep track of all players and all these four titles and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's kind of cool that, you know, I've kind of kept my eye on them. And um, yeah. now, you know, they're here playing for us. Uh, and it's kind of cool yeah. to kind of see the same roster that it was before when I first originally, you know, met them. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. I Reviction Neglect been casting over them for almost a year and a half now. I have nothing but praise for those guys and what they've done here in SoCal and, and making a name for themselves. And like you said, they were originally on teams in, I believe it was in the Ghost days, the Go or AW, I'm sorry, the AW days, yeah. uh, playing pro there, or at least semi-pro. Uh, and so for them to finally hit that age limit that they can actually you know make things happen for themselves now, uh, it's super cool. So that's team. But on the other side, on the female side, we also have a female pro league team, and they're doing some big things right now. What are, where are they going in October, man? Uh, well, they're going to the Gamer Gauntlet. It's uh, pretty much a tech convention and eSport event cruise um, going from Florida to the Bahamas from, I think it's October 20th to the 23rd. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, so. It's, it's, right, it's around, yeah, it's, I think it's this. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure that's the exact dates. But, yeah, it's going to be really great. There's going to be a lot of organizations, a lot of events going on, um, a lot of big companies coming out. So it's, it's going to be really exciting. I mean, plus you get to go on a cruise. You get to yeah. see the Bahamas. Yeah. I mean, there, I Do mean, some gambling. What else is there, like, not to like about it? And then you yeah. get eSports. So, I mean, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah. I can't wait for that event. <clears throat> Our girls team has been doing absolutely amazing. And now to actually yeah. get to see them kind of go to an event and play at a land event just for the females. I mean, I've seen them yeah. go to the events, and I've seen them, you know, show up at open events and play against, you know, male teams and, you know, beat male teams and stuff like that. So to see them actually go up and play against, you know, the girls that they play, every day online um you know that's really exciting to see uh, 
I think I'm pretty sure. I mean, don't quote me. I'm pretty sure this will be the first ever actual, you know, Call of Duty female land event. So it, it is. As uh, somebody who has been with the FPL since day one, uh, we've been trying to book lands. We've been trying to figure out how lands will work. So this is a super cool experience to watch FPL finally get their opportunity to uh, play on a land setting, even though it's not technically land. I mean, let's let's be real. It's yeah. actually. C. Should we call it that? I don't know. Austin, yeah, who knows? I know you have an opinion on this cruise. I, you and I have been talking about it. You and I have been talking about trying to get onto it. What are you thinking about this cruise, man? This cruise is going to be absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it's a big stepping stone in gaming all around where, like, different... It's a whole bunch of different games and a whole bunch of different... You know, there's cosplayers. There's... Uh, there's Call of Duty. There's um, just it, it's it's gonna be phenomenal. Um, I I want to go. I'm not sure if I can, but if I do get a chance to go, uh, it, it's definitely gonna be uh, something to remember. And it's like I said, it's a big stepping stone in gaming all around because it's all these different entities of gaming put into a boat. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, there's only there's only a uh, a couple of spots available to go and you're gonna see you know celebrities there in the gaming scene you're gonna see you know just all sorts of stuff it's gonna be phenomenal yeah it's definitely going to be intense but let's move over into one more game that i know ben you like watching this team i personally got into a lot of rainbow six tell us about our rainbow six team man oh uh, yeah so they're basically uh yeah you know, they're basically we picked them up uh here i think uh a month ago is when we signed them yeah. um but they uh they're essentially semi-pro but they have you know kind of ground their way up through um you know just online online play and um you know they win a lot of the uh you know big 2k tournaments and things that they have um and have been you know really competitive as of late and uh you know we think it's a squad that um definitely you know can be very competitive uh you know in these and basically, you know, for the pro league, um, and, you know, to get themselves, you know, into that kind of, you know, top eight, top four championship spot with basically all the top teams. So I mean, we, we, we felt when we looked at the roster that, you know, we could just, that this was the team that, you know, could kind of maybe break through and really kind of lead us into another scene in gaming and kind of make, get another top placement for the org. So. Yeah. Awesome. Rainbow six is, and it's kind of on the cusp, you know, it was one of those things when it came out, everybody thought it was super cool, and like, I still think it's like, by far one of the coolest games out there, it's super strategic, and it combines that the FPS element that a lot of people love, but the scene really hasn't broken out yet, so, you know, I'm hoping to see that with, especially with Panda getting into it, uh, there are other big words in it, but I hope to see that that uh, definitely breaks out here in the upcoming future. Let's move though. Talking about the past, talked about what Pan where Panda has been. Let's talk about the future of Panda, starting with the stream team. You guys mentioned it earlier that we just picked up a stream manager now and recently partnered on Twitch. Big thing for Panda Gaming moving into the future. Why don't you guys give us kind of a feel? Listen, we can just kind of go all around since pretty much everybody here streams actually and, and kind of give like what's an insight to you, um, starting with Ben, on like where you see the stream team and especially because you stream a lot on the stream team. Uh, where do you see yourself kind of fitting in there, man? Um, I mean, the Twitch partnership has been uh, it's been pretty huge in the past few weeks. We've been able to bring in some pretty high quality, you know, top level streamers with some pretty, you know, who pull some some pretty good viewing numbers. Um, mm -hmm. So really, for us, you know, it was you know we've we've had a stream team for a long time, but it, it's always been kind of difficult to pull in, you know, some of those higher level you know, viewing audiences and, and higher level streamers that really can help promote your org in terms of, you know, the streaming side and kind of content creation. So, you know, once we were able to announce that, um, you know, all of our teams were partnered and that we'd be receiving the Twitch team and that type of stuff, um, you know, we were able to really kind of beef up our resume um, and really, you know, we what we did, we went out and we got, um, we brought on Berlin K um, to be our stream manager. And... She, you know, has led other various stream teams, helped build other stream teams. And so we've kind of let her take the reins and, you know, make, um, you know, just make our stream team, you know, 
basically, you know, make it legitimate, make it not yeah. just a, you know, NAM org stream team, you know, with just yeah. anyone can join, um, you know, so we, we kind of created some guidelines and some, um, you know, just kind of some numbers that we would have to set, you know, to even bring on new people. So, you know, at yeah. this point, um, you know, for new streamers coming on, we have an application process, but it's, uh, it's definitely a little bit, um, more of an in-depth thing. And, but we, you know, feel that it's really helped to grow our exposure on Twitch. So, um, you know, and personally, um, you know, I've, all, I've, I've, I've been streaming off and on for a long time. Um, I'm not a huge streamer. Um, but just being with the stream team, just being able to grind every day and, you know, help, help each other, help host each other, being on that team page, it's mm -hmm. really helped exposure. And, yeah. you know, since, since all of that has happened, you know, the past month or so, I've had a pretty crazy month streaming. So yeah. <laughs> just offering that legitimacy of the team, the team page, it's, it's been a massive step for our content creation in terms of live streams and that type of thing. So, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Cody, I know you don't stream as much. So I know this question kind of comes a little maybe in the fog for you, but as somebody who maybe doesn't stream as much, but still is a huge part of Panda, what do you see that you're enjoying about the Panda stream team that's really just got you excited for what this team can do in the future? Um, I mean, obviously being like more on the business side of things, um, you know, I kind of see it as an opportunity not to only, um, you know, display another marketing platform, but to kind of get people more involved with some of our sponsors, kind of help, you yeah. know, get their names out there and, you know, kind of create uh, more interaction, not even just between, you know, our sponsors and people within Panda, but also with, you know, our streamers and their viewers, you know, the viewers and Panda Gaming, the Panda Gaming fans with the streamers and, you know, just all the <clears throat> interaction going on between the different groups and everyone's different fans and all the viewers and everything. Um, I think that that's kind of the best part, just kind of seeing that growth and kind of seeing, you know, uh, different people come in and just kind of seeing, uh, you know, just kind of seeing the growth, just kind of seeing everyone, you know, um, grow from it and everyone, you know, starting to see the benefits from it and everything else. I mean, yeah. for me, there's not much better to see uh, than, you know, yeah. parts of your company uh, succeeding and everyone uh, enjoying and benefiting from it. So um, yeah. obviously, you know, that's, that's something that I really enjoy about it. So, yeah, absolutely. Austin, last one's for you, man. As a streamer, what is your favorite part about finally being a part of the Panda Gaming stream team? Um, I want to. I want to get one thing straight. I am by no means a streamer. I stream nah, to have fun. <laughs> and that's I, what streamers stream. do, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I don't devote like I. I don't devote my my. Uh, my career to it or my life to it or anything um but uh being part of a stream team even as like i get five viewers on a good day <laughs> like yeah. um and even being being part of the stream team has brought in just more viewers to my stream just yeah. by being on the team itself um yeah. like ben said it it brings that legitimacy to panda gaming and it brings the legitimacy to anybody who's involved in the stream team you know not like again like ben said not anybody can join there's an application process and there's certain guidelines and um to be a streamer for panda so like i said i'm not a streamer for panda <laughs> um my my role in panda has I've been fortunate enough to be invited on the stream team, but um, but like I said, I'm I'm not a streamer. But uh, I I am it 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 has brought more viewers and more uh, hosts and stuff to our bigger streamers. Um, you know, uh, even smaller streamers that were with us before uh, have gotten like huge hosts um from bigger streamers just because they're you know on a on a panda stream team and uh you know we tweet out every time that we uh that there's a bunch of us live um so it's going to be twitch.tv slash team slash pnda gaming um to check out our stream team and uh if you want to get involved with it uh there's an application uh we might put it down in the description um yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to be putting it on the website, too, uh, cool. so, so people can actually yeah. go and grab it there. The website 
is looking good. I'm excited about it. I've been talking to the guy who's been working with the website and the things that he wants to do. And so like, that's, that's a super exciting outlet, you know, getting able to go, being able to go on there and check out the things that Panda has done. Uh, so make sure you guys check that one out also. But there's also a second side. Stream Team is awesome and that live stuff is cooking and it's doing really, really well. But the side that I keep up with the most is the content creation side. You know, Panda Podcast is going to be part of that content creation side as I am on that team. Um, so, Ben, some insight into maybe things that people can expect to see from the content creation team uh, in the upcoming times with Panda. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've, uh, I think here in the next, you know, few months, we've, and even you've probably seen recently that, you know, we've made um, a much greater effort to be putting out, you know, whether it's weekly content or, you know, just do special content for the Panda Gaming YouTube channel. So just in terms of the Orge channel, you know, you're going to see um, a much bigger effort on the YouTube side of things, on the content creation and in, in terms of whether it's product reviews or, you know, things like the podcast. And you know, we're obviously starting this up. Uh, we started the Panda Insider um, powered by Insane Labs. Um, so that, you know, that's another kind of quick two minute recap, you know, things that have been going on around Panda and, and other areas of esports. Um, basically, uh, almost like a precursor to what the podcast would be each week. So it's, it, you know, it kind of plays into it. Um, mm -hmm. but you're gonna, so you're going to see an extended effort there. You're going to see a lot more content coming out of, you know, us at the Panda house, you know, from code, from I, from trip, who's also here, one of our streamers and plays for the CSGO team. Um, and then in terms of, you know, our YouTube team, um, you know, we have some content creators who've obviously, obviously brought you on to help us with some projects. Um, but yeah. I think you're going to see a lot more, you know, project based things that we're going to have some of our content people do. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to see a lot more videos coming out from us in terms of, you know, whether it's just edits or, you know, when, when team announcements, you know, we're going to start, you know, we have been releasing, you know, highlight videos of these teams so that it's yeah. just more interactive on the content creation side. And then I think the last thing, you know, I've, I've kind of been working in the background about potentially bringing on a top level, you know, YouTube sniping team to kind of get us back Ooh. involved in sniping and that kind of thing. So that's kind of a little bit of a spoiler alert, but I'm kind of working <laughs> with one of our guys in the background on that. And uh, I'm not sure when it's going to happen. Um, I'm trying to get it to happen sooner than later, but I yeah. think that we got some cool stuff coming for everybody. So, yeah, that definitely is a, is an interesting aspect that I think is been on kind of the uprising lately it kind of died there in like the black ops 3 mm -hmm. kind of era but like I, it, it's starting to pick up more as people are starting to get excited about trick shouting and stuff like that again but that actually leads perfectly into my last question for the podcast and that is i want from each one of you guys i want it to be different i really do want this to be different but if you just can't think of anything else it can be the same one team or esports or scene that you you want panda to break into somewhere you know with rainbow six that we're talking about that has just been coming up recently with the re recent acquisition of this cod team uh where is where do you want to see panda go next where do you want to see people trying to put in their applications for a team to be part of panda um i think uh a esport that hasn't we i mean they've only had like one or two events for it um but I think a really cool esport that um, should be an esport more so than it is now is Overwatch. Um, I mean, it's a super competitive game, and uh, they haven't had many events for it. But if if it starts to pick up more and more, um, I think it would be really cool for Panda to get an Overwatch team. Yeah, there's a lot of interest and controversy right now over Overwatch. Uh, and the way that they're kind of trying to structure leagues and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah. it will be definitely something to look forward to in the future. And that I could I could totally see Panda picking up an Overwatch team. In fact, if Overwatch progresses the way that it has, you know, they're just kind of taking it slow, letting the community kind of develop, letting it go from there and then posting events. Uh, I could totally see it, just any org wanting to pick it up and Panda for sure. I could see them picking one up. Cody, what do you think? Where do you see the breakout scene for Panda next? Um, I don't know, uh, I got, I don't know, uh, I would like to get into a mobile game, um, some, All right. some, some, some a little bit different, um, uh, Dota, League of Legends, um, uh, I mean, it's definitely a different scene, um, 
Yeah, the game developers are a lot more involved with the leagues and everything else. So there's yeah. a lot, you know, a lot, a lot more guidelines and you know, red tape and everything else that you have to follow. Yeah. But um, I mean, I definitely like it. It's a lot more integral sport. It's uh, it's one of those games that has a lot of micro mechanics. A lot of th- like you're thinking about a million and one things as you're just trying yeah. to play a game. Uh, and uh, I, I found that really interesting. That's just like something personally I would you know eventually like to see this. Panda Panda Gaming Team at Dota TI. I could see it, man. I could see it. The international. (laughs) The international, baby. That that would be huge. Yeah. And lastly, Ben, where do you think it's coming, man? Where's Panda going to be next? Where do you want Panda to be next? Where do I want Panda to be next? Um, I mean, I I definitely think, like, as just a general term, I I think that we're obviously looking to branch into the PC scene. Um, Yeah. Obviously, Cody and Austin just mentioned two PC. <laughs> that two, is interesting, right? <laughs> that would potentially be in, in PC. Um, you know, but but I think it, I think it's because you know we 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 are more familiar with consoles. So, but if I had to yeah. p- pick a specific game, um, you know, I I think ultimately, and we've been involved in it before, but I think ultimately, I would really like to see us break out. You know, get a breakout team or a, a top level team in Counter Strike. I think that yeah. is. Um, sure. Personally, I, I think it as an esport is, I think it's the best viewer esport um, for television. I mean, it's, it's been on television. <laughs> it's true, E League. Uh, yeah. E League, um, you know, the majors are always a massive success in terms of viewership mm-hmm. on Twitch, that type of thing. Yeah. But it's um, it's just an entertainment game. It's obviously my favorite, so I'm, I'm very biased. But <laughs> I think it's I think yeah. it's I think it's the I think it's a, one of the more structured scenes in esports right now. Completely agree, and though. It, it's it's yeah. got the you know massive exposure. So for multiple reasons, um, I would love to have a high level Counter Strike team, um, you know, in the future. So yeah, personally, this is just my personal opinion, man. I, I'm looking for Smash or, or Street Fighter. You know, I'm getting into the yeah, fighting games with fighting Civ- games. yeah with All Civil right. with Civil War that just happened recently, yeah, and yeah. being able to work being able to work on production crew for that. Uh, definitely loving the fighting game scene and, and it, getting to see actually a lot of those top players picked up right now is, is pretty incredible with the way that uh, you know Smash Alliance coming out and things yep. like that so definitely plenty of different esports breaking out I mean this is really starting to become the year of esports um, and so groups like Panda or orgs like Panda are definitely gonna gonna be breaking out and breaking breaking out big um, I mean, we already have top placements I'm not I'm not worried about that but I'm, I'm I want to see I want to see Panda every you know every top you know I want to see them up there at the top of everything. So any last words from any of you guys? Uh, 2018, we're gonna be a household name in the year 2018. You heard it. You heard it here sure. from Austin. Both the men. Well, I I feel like that's the title of this. E- no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but if that is it, thank you guys so much for tuning into the Panda Podcast. This isn't gonna be how it's gonna be Ed, every week. I was just super excited to get. Uh, ben and Cody on here as the owners of um, Panda and, and to get in here and, and talk about who and what Panda is. Expect different things from, uh, you know, going over things like when we're talking about Overwatch. You know, we want to break down what's going on with these leagues that they're trying to build and, and different quotes and things from people who are coming out. Expect that when we see teams going to events for Panda, you know, we're going to be doing all kinds of coverage and all kinds of talking about even, I mean, I could even see breakdowns of specific games and stuff like that Uh, so expect to see a very wide range of things coming for the future of panda podcast but thank you ben thank you cody for coming on austin thank you so much for co-hosting here with me it's been a great time talking to you guys we are going to be out of here thank you for tuning into the panda podcast